Let's talk about how to translate sentences with quantifiers like no and not every into predicate logic. But first I want to take a look at these two formula and figure out what they mean in English before we go from English into predicate logic because that will help us understand why we do what we do. So the first one says, for not all x, px. So this would be saying something in English like not every x is p. So x is something in the universe and then p is a property. So I want to think about this in terms of a picture. So let's say we have uh, this box that is the universe and then we have this set of things p. What we're saying here is that yeah there might be some things in p but we know that there's some x, some element outside of p. So we could also paraphrase not all x p x, not every x is p, as saying that there is some x in our universe that is not p. So we could think of not all x p x as being roughly equivalent to exists an x not p x. Okay, so uh, not every x is p is just like saying that some x is not p. Now when we think about the second formula here, not exists x p x, this is saying that there's not something that is p. So this is like saying that no x is p. And when we think about this same picture here, with a universe and something p, what we're saying is that every element out here is outside of p. So nothing is p. So another way of thinking about this paraphrase would be to say that all x is not p, because there's not a single element in our universe that is in p. So uh, this area here is sort of like a dead area. So we could paraphrase not exists in x p x as being for all x not p x. Okay, so when we think about sentences with quantifiers like not every or no, there's going to be two ways we can tackle this. And my recommendation at first is for always just to go with a straightforward one with the negation outside. Not all x p x not exists x p x. Okay, so with this in mind, Let's think about how we can translate something like no dog is happy. And of course I'm going to use dogs and happy because those are the words that just make the most sense to me. So when we say no dog is happy, we probably want a key. So we want to say something like dx, uh, x is a dog. So we can establish that. Uh, hx would be x is happy. Okay. So we could draw a picture first that helps. So we could think of here's all the set of dogs and here's all the set of happy things. And what we see in this set is that there is no overlapping element here. So for all of the dogs in here, in our universe, not a single one of them are happy. So we could translate this in two different ways. Using this picture, we might think, okay, for all x, if x is a dog, then it is not the case that x is happy. So for all x, if x is a dog, x is not happy. That means no dog is happy. Or we can think of it as saying that, okay, when we have the words no dog, this is also like saying there does not exist an x such that x is a dog. And then when we do the part is happy, we would just chain it with the existential like we would before. So we would say and because we have the existential and then hx for being happy. So there is no x out there such that x is a dog and x is happy. So this paraphrase here also points to the fact that we have nothing in the overlapping region. So we have like nothing in this shared space. So that would be two different ways of translating the sentence no dog is happy. So either all x, if dx, then not hx, or there is no x such that dx and hx. Okay, what about the sentence, not all dogs are happy? So again, we could use the same sort of picture here. In fact, let's use the same uh, keys, so dx and hx 
I'm just going to write dog and happy here for shorthand. And now when we think about a picture here of us in the universe, okay, uh, not all dogs are happy. So we have things that are happy and we have things that are dogs. So we know that there's going to be at least one dog that is outside of the happy set. But you know, there may be some in here in the intersection, which is fine. So using the picture, what we could say is that there is some X out there, such that X is a dog, but it is not the case that X is happy because X is in the dog set, but not in the happy set. That'd be one paraphrase. Or we can take a look and say, okay, not all dogs. What is this in quantifiers? So it is not the case that for all X, if X is a dog, and then we would fill in our predicate here, the rest of it. So our happy, and this would just be HX in our translation. So two ways of saying the same thing. Either there is some X where X is a dog and X is not happy, or it's not the case that for every X out there, if X is a dog, then X is happy. So this just points to the fact that there is something in the dog set that is not in the happy set. Okay, so two ways of translating not all dogs are happy. So again, it's your choice which one makes more sense to you. But we're going to see the advantages of uh, the second approach, putting the not in front of a quantifier in at least one of these example sentences. So not every professor is evil. Okay, I'm going to put PX as being X as a professor and EX as X is evil. Okay, so maybe the sentence isn't true, but that's fine. Okay, so not every professor is evil, so we could translate it piece by piece. It is not the case that for all X, if X is a professor, then X is evil. So it's just like translating every professor is evil, then putting a negation in front of it. But alternatively, we could say, okay, there is some professor out there who is not evil. This is another way of paraphrasing it. So we can choose either of these translation. There is some professor who's not evil, or it is not the case that all professors are evil. Okay, what about in this second one? So no professor fails every student. So again, we can go piece by piece and say, there is no, so there does not exist an X, such that X is a professor. But this is a little bit different. Fails every student. So we have to say there is no X where X is a professor. And for all Y, if Y is a student, then uh, we need fails every student. So fails can be F and who's failing who? Well, X the professor would be failing the student Y. So this would be fine. There is no X where X is a professor. And for every Y, if Y is a student, then X fails Y. But we can see here, if we try to do the alternative translation, it's a little bit more challenging because then we would have to do some negation on the predicate. We'd have to say for all X is if X is a professor. So in fact, why don't we try this? Uh, we'd have to say for all X, if X is a professor, then for all Y, if Y is a student, then X does not fail Y because not every professor is doing it. In fact, we're saying no professor is doing it. So this one is a little bit more complicated if we do this. So this is typically why I prefer the first approach here where we just put the negation out front because we don't have to worry about this weird sort of paraphrase. Okay, so continuing. Not all colors are bright or vibrant. So, okay, for not for all X, this is just translating not all. Uh, if X is a color, then we're saying then X is bright or vibrant. So not for all X, if X is a color, then X is bright or X is vibrant. So we can say BX or VX. Okay, last sentence. Uh, not every kid who writes 
will become richer than every kid who doesn't. Okay, this is a much more complicated sentence, but we can still do this. So not every kid who writes. Okay, so not for all x. And we're saying every kid who writes. So this is like x. This is our conditional here, our, the left side, our antecedent. So not for all x. If x is a kid and x writes, okay, will become richer than every kid who doesn't. So now we need to talk about all of the kids who don't write. So we say then for all y, if y is a kid and y doesn't write, so the word write is really after doesn't, but we don't pronounce it, will become richer than every kid who doesn't write. So all y, y is a kid and y doesn't write is our restriction there. And then what's the main predicate of the sentence? Well, it is, will become richer than. So let's say this is r, and who's becoming richer than who? Well, x would be richer than y. So that would be our full translation. So not for all x, if x is a writing kid, then for all y, if x is not a writing kid, then x becomes richer than y. And because we've negated the quantifier out front, we don't really have to worry about doing any negation on the predicate will become richer than. Well, if you do a paraphrase, it's going to be a lot more work that needs to be done, and you have to find some sort of equivalent translation in your head, which is a little bit more complicated. So anyways, uh, that's it for some predicate logic. If you enjoyed the video and you have questions, you can just put them down below, and either me or someone else will hopefully be able to answer them.